Hi, Paula Jo from Cedar Quilts with a little oopsie fixin'. So we've all had this happen. I'm down to the last little bit of my quilt and I am running out of space. I'm gonna be bumping into my leader grips. I have enough backing, but just barely enough backing. So here's the way that I add on an extra buffer leader. I oftentimes add an extra buffer leader to my backside and then I attach that to my leader. But I was thinking, oh, I'm, I'm gonna be just fine here. But yeah, no, I wasn't. So I move my batting and my top quilt out of the way. I place my buffer leader on top and then I basted with a half inch stitch all the way across here, okay? And then just made it nice and smooth and happy here, okay? Now I am stitching my buffer leader to my backing. And you can see here was where I basted while everything was still connected. Now I have added my buffer leader. I've added some little clips. And I have undone the main portion of the leader grip. And now I am basting with a quarter inch pretty darn close to where the edge of the salvage is. And I'm just doing a small section at a time. And as I move along, I do have my ruler base on for extra support. And I'm just moving along. Let's see if I can do this. You know, I'm just moving along and I'm basting this. And right now I'm just doing my, boy, this is hard to do without Lori here to to do my videos. But anyway, um, I'm just basting along here, making sure that this is staying smooth from the, well, can I get in here? I don't know how she does this all the time. So I'm keeping things smooth from my first basting out here. I'm keeping track that I'm just barely overlapping a little bit, so I'm keeping things nice and smooth. And I am just trying to move along here and keep basting this on here, trying to stay as straight as I can. I did use my channel locks for the original baste. And now I'm just basting along here and once I get to another clip, I'm gonna take this next section off and keep it going. And then once I have that stitch all the way across, I'm gonna remove my original baste. I'm gonna open this up and I'm going to attach this buffer leader to my regular leader and then everything will be just fine. Come back in just a second. And I'm trying to keep it just smooth from the original basting line. Move this little one over. Right to the end here now. So now, this hopefully will be pretty smooth and straight here. That was my original basting line. We're gonna take the basting line out. We're just gonna snip it in a couple of places here and pull that out. Okay, once you take the first one out, you should be able to pull the bottom one out completely. And now we have the back fabric basted to the buffer leader. And now I can 
attach my leader together again. And then I can continue sewing and now I will have that extra inch which is going to be more than enough to get to the edge of the quilt. Yeah. So now that I have the extra buffer leader connected to my back fabric, I wrap things around and just like usual, I use magnets to hold the back fabric in place so that I can bring the regular leader over and I attach with the leader grips like usual and then snap my leaders on and then take off the magnets and put them over here. And now we're going to check to make sure that everything is smooth and happy before we continue on. So I'm going to drop that down. We're going to bring this out. And if for some reason this back fabric is wonky and unhappy, then we're going to redo things again. But the way I load, I usually get things pretty happy on the first attempt. And yay, now I'm going to have room to advance my quilt. I'm going to bring my batting in nice and smooth. And when I extend my quilt, I can feel that, oh, yes, I have a good inch. So I actually have quite a few of these buffer leaders made up and I just used regular old fabric. I usually left the salvage on because you want these as straight of grain so there's no stretch to them. Um, and then the salvage doesn't unravel, so you can use that easily. Otherwise, I usually serge the edges so that they don't ravel and make a mess. But I usually have a wide set and I have a narrow set. And then I have long ones and short ones, so depending on if I'm using a small quilt, if I'm loading a small quilt, then I, I use the shorter leaders. If I'm using um, a really wide back, then I have these longer ones. And if they are solid color, I usually mark them so I can easily see them hanging on my hanger and know which one I want. But like I said, a wide leader, a buffer on the back fabric for the top and a narrower one for the bottom. I can get my backs basted to these before I'm going to be loading the next quilt and have them ready to go. This is much, much more frugal. You know me, I'm kind of frugal about things. But this is much less expensive than buying, um, you know, the zipper leaders or, you know, the official handy quilter ones or whichever brand you are. You can certainly buy more of those. But how often do you have a little extra fabric from a project that you've trimmed off. And um, yeah, this just works out really, really nicely to make those just barely big enough backs, <gasps> plenty big enough that makes it, you know, a little easier. So, alrighty, that's the final tr tip of the day on that. And now I have to finish up this quilt. Oh, it's gonna be so gorgeous. Yes, and this is a fundraiser for my, my best friend, Lori, who usually does all the camera work for us. But uh, yeah, I, I hope you, um, if you're so inclined and able, I would really appreciate you um, adding to her GoFundMe page or any of the options we have for donations on our website for Lori for her um, medical expenses for cancer. Anyway, thank you so much. God bless you all. Toodaloo. Um, yeah, anyway, there's always oodles of good options. But the best option is to add that buffer leader to your back fabric before you load, before you load the backing onto the frame. <laughs> yeah. We've all done it, you know, and this is how we learn and remember to do the things we're supposed to do. <laughs> Have a good day. Toodaloo.